In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, good morning. It is Tuesday, the 15th day of December, in the year of our Lord and Saviour, 2020. Today is the final day, the 21st day, in our 21st, in our 21 days, Novena, with and for our children. And we can say hallelujah because we have had a journey. And we thank God we have come to the end. And when this day is coming to an end, we'll just enter into Holy Mass. Because our first Mass comes tonight when we are entering into Wednesday. That is, uh, the first Mass comes at 3.30 in the morning. So we thank God. We thank God because this has been a fruitful journey. We have journeyed together with our children, praying for them and praying with them. And if there is any journey that we have made that has been so fulfilling, it is this for our children. And especially knowing that in most cases, we were praying for people who could not pray for themselves. Why? Because some are very young and they do not even know what is happening. That is even why uh, tonight when we do the dedication, uh, you as moms and dads, some of you, you read the dedication of prayer for your sons and daughters. That is how crucial it is. And that is how touching it is that it is a journey that is so personal, so personal and so fulfilling that we have been able to do. And I thank you for that. All those of you, those of you who have been able to journey with me for those 21 days, every moment of the 21 days thinking about our children, we thank God. May you remain eternally blessed. Yesterday, we did start a reflection on um, the joy that we have, the joy of praying for our children, and what this joy, you know, why it is so important to know that we are praying for our children, because this joy reminds us of something. We are happy because we know this will happen, you know. It's just like when we have planted, we have done our part, then we see the joy of knowing that one day there will be a harvest. One day there will be a harvest. When we do investment, the joy of knowing that one day there will be some profit. This is exactly the joy that we are in. The other thing that gives us joy for praying for our children is that we know that our children, because of our prayers, our children will not be unequally yoked. And especially in intimate relationships, which later leads to marriage. Did you know that quite a good number of our children are really struggling because they are in wrong relationships? That is what we call unequally yoked. There comes a time that as a mother and as a dad, you purpose to tell God, I know my daughter is in a certain relationship. I don't want it. For the future of my daughter, in Jesus' name, I don't want it. For the future of my son, I'm telling you, dear father, I don't want this. Because when our children are unequally yoked, that is like um, signing in for perpetual unhappiness. The journey starts now. Those of you who have very young kids, tell God that I know because I have warned them for you, I know my children will not be unequally yoked when it comes to intimate relationships. Now this is important. For those of you already, your children are in young adulthood and they have started dating and some of them have found themselves in some funny relationships. Be happy too, because we must keep on telling God. Yes, I know my daughter may be starting to date. Father, I want, I want my daughter to get a man who will respect her for who she is. I know my son is starting to date. Father, I pray that my son will meet a girl who will love him for who he is. Do you remember that during our novena, 
in one of the days we prayed for their future, their future, their future um, partners. And this is important. We are doing this because we know for a fact that our children may have had all the things that we could have given them. And then they end up in very painful and frustrating relationships that might even make some of them end up as single mothers and single fathers. It can be such traumatizing. And therefore, when we know that we have done our part and we have cried to God, specifically telling him something about our children, then we can only sit and wait for the good news. The good news knowing that my daughter will never be unequally yoked. My son will never be unequally yoked. That he will enter into a relationship that will honor you as his father and creator and redeemer. That my daughter will enter into a relationship that will honor you as her redeemer. This is important and this is the joy that we are in. And tomorrow when we meet for the closure masses, we will just be celebrating, telling God thank you. Thank you because he has made us, he has made us the people that we would want to be, that we have become a family, a family of prayer. And as I said, we will have to make it our duty and our responsibility to pray for our children without ceasing because already now we know that whatever we are doing will give us results tomorrow and in eternity. Another joy is the joy that their thoughts will be pure. We prayed for their thoughts, didn't we? Oh, yes, we did. And therefore, we are happy because we know through this journey, one thing that we have been able to get is that we have an assurance that the thoughts of our children will be pure. And the other thing is that, that their heart will be stirred to give generously to God's work. This is an area when we pray for our children that we forget. That our children will emulate their moms and their dads. That they will give generously to the work of God and to the church. Because we have reminded them the importance, the importance of giving. Now let me tell you something. Uh, one thing that has, that has given me a lot of joy. Uh, for some six plus years, I was working with and for the Catholic bishops at the, um, the national office in radio department. After that, uh, my archbishop, Archbishop Moheria, did ask me to go and work with and for the university as uh, the chaplain. And one thing that gave me a lot of joy is that when I started working with the students, the students have understood the concept of tithing. You know, that, that to me that was, that was very transformative. That the children, and they are so young, from the age of 17, maybe the old days is 22 or 23, but already every Sunday, they are the ones who remind each other that to, don't forget that uh, today we are tithing. Don't ask how much they tithe. But the question is, these children already know the importance, they know the importance of giving to the church. And you can imagine a child who is 19 years old and he has the consciousness of giving to the church. And this is one thing that is so, so, so encouraging. And I would want to say thank you to the moms and dads of these children because they taught them the importance of giving and they prayed for them. Now, dear moms, I can tell you for a fact and dads that your prayers are not getting lost. I am a witness that our children already understand the importance of supporting the church and giving. And therefore, this is the joy that their heart, when their hearts are touched, they will not only give whatever material things they have, they will even offer themselves for, 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 for the service of the church. Already at Dedan Kimathi University, I have a number of young men who want to join priesthood. Some from, from various schools, and you can be, you can, you know, how, how, how happy it is to see students from the School of Engineering wanting to finish the engineering course and go become priests. Young boys from the School of, of uh, IT, they would want to finish and go and become priests. 
others from the school of business the same and from across the across the board and i'm so happy that this is the the heart that is touched when the heart of a child is touched they can only turn towards god this is so important this is the joy of praying for them they will know that we don't just give our things we even give ourselves how touching that will be and it is so important and please never take it for granted don't get tired that maybe you are praying for your children and you are seeing nothing don't mind now i can tell you i am with your sons and your daughters and you look at them listen to them as they share their bible verse you admire the maturity in them and more importantly the conviction and that is why I am so determined and passionate in this novena because I know what it can do to our children. These are the sons and daughters that we will leave behind, God willing, when we will have rested. And now we know that we are raising a generation, a generation of mature men and women who will not only carry on our names, but they will, as it were, carry on the values the family values that we taught them. And finally, when time will come, they will go and meet their maker because they are prepared for that. When time will come, we know for a fact that our children are prepared and they are set because they know right from the beginning they are meant for God. Whatever they do, it is for God. Their thoughts, it is for God. Their professionalism, it is for God. Their career, it is for God. If they are worshipping, it is for God. Their relationships, they are for God. There is nothing that they do for themselves. Whatever they do, it is for the Lord. And this is important. Knowing that I have prepared sons and daughters who when time comes they will joyously go and meet their maker and with him be forever and ever in the eternal bliss so if you have not participated in this journey for 21 days please don't mind because we will be doing it every year and uh, those of you who have participated Aki, i want to thank you from the bottom of, of my heart because i know together we have changed a generation and this is not a, a small task no it is something so huge because it has it is already giving us what we call an eternal inheritance so good people as i sign out i want to ask you now to start preparing yourself very well for mass i'll be able to go to to, to help you to go through the preparation how it will be um, tonight and uh, um, the whole day as we prepare for the closure masses because we may have more than two masses by the look of things, but we will be able to let you know. Uh, of course, by now everything is, is clear that uh, I'll be able to give you some updates after 7, 7 a.m. and then we'll be able to prepare ourselves that uh, for later uh, toward the day end as we prepare ourselves for the closure mass. Thank you. Thank you for this journey. Thank you for journeying with me. Thank you for uh, taking it upon yourselves, purposing to stand in the gap for our children. What we have done, we cannot explain in words. And let us keep on doing it. Even those of you who started and stopped and started and stopped, don't mind. Even those of you, when you started... It's like uh, things were getting worse, and they're even getting worse. Don't mind. It is always very dark when it's about when the day is about to break. It's always very dark when the day is about to break. In fact, the darkest part of the night is the one that is next to dawn. Remember, the devil attacks you when you are about to enjoy a breakthrough. And I have always told you, the devil does not fight empty people. The devil fights warriors. 
If you are being fought, it is because you are a warrior. Keep the spirit. Keep the spirit. It shall be well. Thank you. I know I'll see you again today. And I'll see you in mass. It shall be well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Keep enjoying this day. Tunane kwa misa. Asanti sana. God bless.